But right now we've just put everything into the console window. We have some values in the environment. But if we go into session and restart R, our environment's now empty. Now these commands are in our history and we can recreate all of this by going through the history. But the easier thing is to type things into the source pane and then you can edit and save and rerun your text. So we can set name one, Spell my own name right. And full name. Paste. Okay. Now, once I've typed these into source, we can see they're still not in the environment. You actually need to run them to um, run the functions. We can run them line by line. You can put your cursor anywhere on the line and hit Command Enter or you could hit the run button to run each line. Okay. So I can restart R again and clear the environment. You can also highlight several functions that you want to run and click run or command enter to run them all. This makes your code entirely reproducible. Now I'm using the equal sign here there's another um, kind of quirk to R that we often, and we'll usually in this class, use instead the assignment operator. That's this less than sign and the minus sign or dash. The assignment operator does the same thing. I'm just going to restart R quickly. You can run that. You get the same thing. OK. Now. In R, we can use white space, spaces and tabs and line breaks, pretty much anywhere. So what I want you to do is to make sure that you're using white space in a way that keeps your code easy for you to read. So we can do things like separate the arguments here, one on every line. And if your arguments end up being very long, this can be useful sometimes. And sometimes it's easier to have them all on one line. So we could have a, a slightly more complicated function. So let's use the function um, our norm. Or it, it gives a sample from a normal distribution with a specified number of items you've sampled, mean, and standard deviation. Now our studio gives us some help with this. If we type our norm, our function, open parenthesis, and then a tab it will give you an interactive menu of what are the different arguments. So we can see here, the first argument is n, number of observations. So if we click on n, let's say we want to get 10 values from a normal distribution. Then arguments are separated by commas. You can hit the tab key again, it will tell you what the next argument is, mean, a vector of means. So what's the mean of the distribution that we want to get these numbers from? Let's make that 100. Um, and then our next value, SD, a vector of our standard deviations. We only want one here. So let's make the standard deviation five. So we want 10 observations from a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of five. You can see I didn't assign that to variable, so we'll just put it into the console. Now, for commonly used functions, Often we just skip writing what the name of each argument is as long as you put them in the right order, the canonical order for that function, you'll get the same. Now our norm gives you a random set of variables so every time you run it you'll get a different set of 10, but the function's doing the same thing even without the argument labels. How do you know what the order is? You can hover over our norm. It will tell you n, mean equals 0, so if you don't set a mean, it will default to 0. And sd equals 1 means that if you don't set a standard deviation, it will default to 1. Which means that you can do things like r norm 10, so we have 10 for the n. We can skip mean and let it default to 0, 
but we can change the standard deviation. If we're skipping any arguments, we have to name everything after that and make SD2 now instead of the default one. You can run that and see we've changed what our output look like looks like. Now, if the hovering over trick doesn't work, you can also get help with question mark, our norm. If you run this, you probably don't want to run that in your in your code every time you you run the script, so maybe just type it into the console. Now you can look in the help viewer and it gives you help on the normal distribution. Now this has four different related functions that it's giving help for. What we're concerned about is our norm. So it tells you the order that the arguments go in, gives you explanation of what the arguments mean, and if you scroll to the bottom, there's usually some examples. This is, this is one way to get help about a function.